Hello, Koshik. Thank you for joining us today. Can you introduce yourself and, and, and your organization? Thanks, Ali. Um, I'm Koshik Sicharan from the Graduate School of Business at the University of Cape Town. Um, I'm the director of their executive MBA program and an associate professor in the faculty. And uh, it's a pleasure to participate in your MOOC. Thank you, Koshik. Can you give us a little bit of, about your own background and how you came to be doing what you're doing currently at UCT? Um, I started out uh, a career in uh, manufacturing, designing um, plant control systems and plant optimization systems, and uh, you know, very technical field and mostly trying to use technology to improve manufacturing processes and it wasn't long and I spent uh, in total about 12 years doing this and throughout this period I uh, I kept going back to systems and what are the systemic problems we were solving and uh, as I moved through my career I, I became more and more intrigued with the idea of um, designing purposeful systems because I got the sense that if the systems were designed and gave the participants a purpose, then uh, managing um, is less challenging and uh, the higher you get higher levels of innovation, creativity, cooperation and, and energy. So it, it just seemed logical that I, I I wanted to understand and study how to design purposeful systems. And then I came to the University of Cape Town in 2006 and I started study towards a PhD in project organizing or the philosophy of project organizing. And uh, I read a, a lot of existential philosophy and sociology to try and understand uh, the lived experience of being in projects and uh, then developed my systems thinking ideas further and then read uh, many of the systems theorists, uh, Umberto Maturana, Francisco Varela, Peter Checkland, uh, Jeffrey Vickers, and, and a whole number of other systems authors. And soon realized that the, the whole discipline of systems thinking is a, uh, is a loosely interacting a set of fields of studies that are mutually complementing the findings of uh, and it was truly an interdisciplinary space and in and around 2012 I met uh, Professor Walter Bates who was then the Dean of the Graduate School of Business at the University of Cape Town and and we started chatting about the ideas he had about complexity and the ideas I had about existentialism and systems thinking and he then asked me to come and help uh, take their executive program to you know to newer heights which was already a successful program and 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 this has been my journey since um, for the last um, what would be 20 22 24 years Koshik, that's really interesting. So how do you build that systems perspective that you were just talking about into the learning experience of the executive MBA students? Um, that's an interesting question, Sally. I think the, you know, the, it's a focus on both the tools, which are, you know, the systems, the, the systems, the field of systems thinking has offered many tools, concepts and theories to look at building models that show emergence, um, concurrent uh, hypotheses, all uh, running at the same time. And uh, you have to teach that to the students in, um, uh, while at the same time you build, uh, what I would say, an ontology of their own being in the world and how action is created. Now the Katja Laszlo, interestingly, uh, wrote in a paper in 2012 that uh, systems thinking is the start of a journey of uh, improving one's consciousness about the system one is participating in. And in the paper itself, she doesn't really um, give uh, ideas on how to do this. And uh, I've been over the years tinkering and, and trying out different things, but 
what I found is necessary to do is is to start teaching the tools with a ontology where the system is out there almost. You know, you get students to appreciate model systems out there. And then you start to shift that ontology to talk about, well, systems from uh, the perspective of somebody uh, from a perceptually guided actor in the world. And then you shift that and you talk about, uh, um, you know, um, systems in the world that are intellectual delineations and worlds that people are functioning in. And, uh, you know, then you, you start to see language quite differently. And at the same time, you also start to um, talk about, you know, the whole theoretical construct of, of what a system is. It's really an intellectual delineation of a world that uh, you would like to discuss with other people or uh, reconcile perspectives around uh, a particular way in which you think the world should work is working and then finally you know when you reach the the uh, what i would call the most mature stage of executive development it's it's the building of these models for the sake of insight and emotional commitment so at this level now you you truly use the models to be affected by the modeling as well as affect the world out there so the modeling is done for entirely different reasons so the teaching of systems thinking uh, has two strands. The one's the tools and the concepts, and the other strand is a whole philosophical understanding of how action arises in the world and talking about the being of human beings in the world. And I think through those kinds of conversations, you truly build a competence of systems thinking and systems being. Uh, and because the one without the others is not the most effective state to have in an executive in particular. And and just taking that on a little bit, so um, the objective really, if you think in teleological terms of means and ends, it, it is, is actually to bring about some form of change and transformation. So is that being in the world the um, mechanism through which you think um, collectively you can bring about change in that system, change in the way that things are happening it, it, towards some kind of normative um, challenge-based scenario, some kind of alteration of the world that people experience. Absolutely. I mean, you could, you could also use the word you make people more conscious of their own agency in the world. So you're really looking at systems and the levers with which you can change these systems. So, you know, when I talk about an emotional commitment or effectiveness from the modeling, that's exactly what I mean is the, you know, the, 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 the consciousness and agency to change it go. Um, so, in a way, through systems ideas, you truly build a transformative leadership capability. That's really interesting. That's so relevant to our MOOC as well in the way that we would integrate those different ideas into a kind of holistic um, way of thinking. Um, so now I'd like you to explain a bit to us about how you might apply that thinking in the specific context of challenges facing South Africa today. And we could uh, uh, start off with just recovering some key issues in South Africa's current political, economical and social context. So we have in, uh, a couple of major um, priorities to attend to in South Africa, the one being the, the kind of uh, unemployment, high unemployment rate amongst the youth of our country. At the same time, we face a challenge with uh, trying to um, pursue economic development in a world context where low growth is kind of the new normal. And thirdly, you look at the, the world of commodity prices now and, you know, uh, almost being at the bottom end of the cycle of, of, of a commodity boom that has passed us and now trying to, um, you know, think about how do you shift the large workforces and, and industry focus on mining 
for extractive mining. And uh, the, the fourth challenge is, if you look at it, is dealing with the, the, what, the, the low levels of uh, social development that is arising from low levels of human development that is arising from a combination of factors, economic development, uh, historical um, inequalities. So in a way, we, we have a, 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 a complex situation where we are noticing growing levels of inequality, growing levels of you know, um, um, distress, also social systems in distress. And these have had an organizing trajectory that has been started decades ago. But our inability to try and model and understand these things and, and understand that, um, you know, the, the collective efforts of, of, of government, business and other uh, uh, agencies responsible for improving the situation and, and understanding how they all interrelate has not been a focus. What we've rather been doing is pursuing uh, policy choices that were conceived in isolation and then integrated as an afterthought. So if you if you were working with a systems metaphor, you would have understood that you know all of these things are interrelated. They're a set of interlocking ideas that are accumulating gains or accumulating losses for society and and how do we how do we at how do we manage this big moving picture but you know we we make plans periodically uh, almost in a vacuum and not understanding that actually we are a product of a system that's already set in motion so you know um, it's no use arguing with the economists that that's what they're doing i think um, uh, it's trying to change the uh, the way in which you you have um, you know public policy making that's not done in a systemic manner, nor is it done in a manner that fosters action. You know, if you go back to the, to the systems idea of world making and the world making needing a dialogue for the world to concretely. Uh, be accessible for people to participate in. Uh, our policy making processes have tried but not necessarily achieved it. So we have policy that's made and uh, in the minds and the hearts of the policy makers but not necessarily in the minds and the hearts of every member of society. So we, we don't have a concerted effort to move together forward in, in any particular way. So it points to a real lack of systems thinking in our know, largest planning activities as a nation. Um, and that's a real challenge, and I think it's a challenge that is partly educational, but it's also partly the, um, you know, the philosophical ideas that underpin how we plan governments, how do we plan public policy. So, you know, what we arguing and should argue for is a different ontology to look at these problems with. And, and um, I can't claim that we're very far down the, uh, the road with that, but uh, you know, we've been putting in effort and I think we ought to put in more effort there. That's really fascinating. And then I think finally, because on the MOOC we're asking the participants to think about some of the messages and tools and um, things that we present and our practitioners present during the course of the six weeks and think of it in the context of a, a real lived um, example that is affecting them at the moment or maybe in their organisation or in their community or in their professional group. Um, and to apply some of the things that we've been talking about. So can you take an example in the South Africa context um, where your systems thinking could usefully be applied to, a, to address a problem that might currently exist or maybe one of your students has worked on or um, something that's a, a real lived example of what you're explaining? I probably won't use mining. Uh, I'll use um, uh, an example of a logistics company. Okay. In South Africa. Uh -huh. 
Um, uh, you know, there's, there was a student who's, who's worked for a multinational logistics company in South Africa, and he was the company he worked for was listed in the in the, uh, the uh, I think it is the it's the the New York Stock Exchange. So it's a multinational from that perspective, and they had no real contextual understanding of of you know the the low how to deal with the frustrations of, of South Africa being in a um, low growth environment so, and poor business results at the same time. And he had to find a way in which he could himself be become motivated to do something about this. You know, you can almost say it, it would have resulted in, in abdicating the, the leadership role of taking this poor situation forward and making it better. And you face the macro context of uh, you know, the shareholder pressure of, you know, wanting better returns and consistent returns. And it's not necessarily a, a bad thing. I mean, that pressure has to be there. And then you have the, another subsystem of there being poor business results for a number of reasons. And um, and he was demotivated by this. And, uh, you know, he was, uh, the world he was seeing was one of hopelessness. And uh, But as soon as he started to to model and and resist the, you know, try and find new business model choices, not necessarily accept the current choices on the table. You know, uh, cut costs to deliver more returns to shareholders, or resign and find something more prosperous. Um, he he really tried to find a new business model, and uh, the systems tools had helped him to to develop a perspective of the world in which uh, an investment in the long term could also sit concurrently with the, the short term demands placed on, on the organizational entity. And if it wasn't through the systems thinking tools, then he would have just um, um, felt hopeless, I think. There would have been, wouldn't have been no levers for him to draw on. So, so that's an example of, of how systems thinking tools help reworld somebody who's become deworlded in a, in, a, in a sense where they don't see levers in the system in which they can change and shift it. Well, thank you, Koshik. That's a, a lovely example of how in the South Africa context and the particular economic uh, social context, um, a real project was developed for one of your students to relook at the company they worked in uh, from a systems perspective uh, to bring about a change, uh, a, re -way of, a, a new way of thinking towards a new form of responsibility to the South African society. So um, I'd like to thank you for joining us very, very much indeed, and we'll be in touch again. Thank you. Thanks, Sally. It was a pleasure.